Very exciting to be here today. Thanks very much, Anne. So I'm going to be sharing uh, some results of a study that we were working on at Hopkins that was funded by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Um, the people that are chairing that specific grant are Joanna Cohn and uh, Andrea Volante. Uh, the purpose of that was to inform US policy, but I think the learnings are applicable to other jurisdictions as well. I also wanted to thank the staff at the Institute, um, Io and Elaine, because they were the two that actually painstakingly searched the globe for all these policies and actually talked to probably some of you here today and other Ministry of Health um, or other uh, bureaucrats in over 100 countries. We're going to um, talk about in the sort of categorizing, um, the categories of regulations that we're, we're seeing. And um, I think that's a, a critical first step to, uh, for us to try and piece together what these kinds of different regulatory approaches mean in terms of public health impact. We've, we've had one paper that's been um, shared trying to understand that. And I just want to state, too, that I'm only reporting what policies are written, what's on the page. We don't necessarily have uh, understandings of how or to what extent these policies have been implemented, um, how close they have um, uh, concordance of, or fidelity with what's actually been written. Um, and the other thing is, that's important is that I'm reporting on national policies. So, of course, a lot of jurisdictions have a lot of policies that's taking place, but more at a local level, a city level, or a state or province level. So these were only uh, laws that were relevant to an entire country. Um, we're going to look at how they, they've been classifying or approaching the classification of products, and, uh, and we're going to have a couple of case studies that we'll go through. So um, there's a lot of countries in the world. Uh, the WHO has over 190, so we were trying to be systematic with which jurisdictions we wanted to specifically tar target. There was a very important report to the WHO. The WHO, as far, part of the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, member parties were um, asked to respond to a survey about how they were regulating things. So we knew at least 90 countries had responded to that survey, and we started the, with those countries. We um, hypothesized that higher income countries might be more likely to have an e-cigarette market and then therefore maybe have more thought in terms of their regulations. So we made sure that all the other um, OECD countries were also included. And then we did systematically search the web and a lot of e-cigarette um, community sites too to try and understand what um, other users were saying about the policies and regulations in, in their countries. So at the end of the day, we, we had identified federal regulations in 61 different countries that had active policies. And I guess if there's one sort of take home from that, it's that uh, in more than half of those um, uh, countries that we identified, they were using existing legislation that had already, uh, already been enacted prior to e-cigarettes. So they were interpreting rules that were already in place and then using those to regulate this, this product. So it wasn't nece necessarily the intent but once these products sort of entered the marketplace and they were considered, well, how do we begin to manage these? Um, uh, they were applying or making the decision to apply some of this, these things that are, were already um, on the board. Um, the domains that we ended up categorizing the regulations in look similar to um, tobacco control in some ways. There's um, uh, policies or regulations related to sale, largely how old you have to be, um, age of majority. In some jurisdictions, you need medical authorization to purchase the products. Uh, a lot of policies around use, when and where you can use the products, uh, use restrictions around enclosed public spaces or transportation, um, tax. Not a lot of countries are uh, enacting specific tax policies, but we did identify a couple. Um, and then advertising, promotion, and sp sponsorship. Um, so here's some of the numbers. And again, um, we've just aggregated the categories. And, and in some cases, countries um, fall into multiple uh, areas. We, we found 17 countries that had uh, age of, uh, minimum age for purchase that largely co correlated with their age for purchasing tobacco, so ranging from 18 to 21 years old. Uh, there were 21 countries on our scan that restrict the sale of e cigarettes if they contain nicotine. If they did not, that was a permissible product in the marketplace. Um, but if they did, it was, it was not allowed. We certainly know from jurisdictions like um, Canada that uh, that's what's on the books, that, but that's not what's happening um, in the marketplace. There were 26 countries that have um, essentially put a, a ban on all products. 
Uh, this is a general way to characterize, characterize this. In a lot of these instances, countries have to, uh, identified the products, for example, as a, a medicine, and so therefore it would be permitted if it went through the regulatory process for that approval. But since it hasn't, it's not, so it's not banned. Um, it's, it's not allowed to be sold because of how they've classified it, it's not permitted in the marketplace until those um, proofs or um, processes are, are followed. Uh, we have three, most uh, countries don't have restrictions, so if an individual is using it, they're, they're not, not in compliance. Um, but three countries do have an overall ban of use, so Cambodia, Jordan, and the UAE. Um, we identified 14 countries that ban the use of e-cigarettes specifically in enclosed public spaces um, uh, or uh, other workplaces. Um, eight countries uh, restricted in certain public spaces, and so that sort of tended to be hospitals, schools, um, jurisdictions like that. And uh, there were 18 that um, specifically only banned it in um, transportation or explicitly banned it. So. Tax. Togo um, has a, a tax of, um, it's a value tax um, uh, based on the percentage of the product cost. Uh, Republic of Korea uh, has a tax that's link linked to um, the amount of nicotine that's uh, in the, the liquid. Okay, advertising, promotion, and sponsorship. Um, this starts to get a little tricky, and, it and in most cases we had to go back and forth with the country several times because if a country has a ban of a product, for example, they maybe don't have an explicit ban of advertising because they explained that it was implicit because the products are not allowed, but we had to go back and forth a fair bit. Um, so of the 47 countries that ban or restrict the sale, 33 um, prohibit or restrict the advertising um, promotion or sponsorship uh, in their policies. Uh, some countries contend that um, uh, they didn't need to state that because of what I previously said. Uh, there are 12 countries that have explicit bans or restrictions on e-cigarette advertising and promotion and sponsorship. Um, that uh, where they haven't had um, sales restrictions. And so um, in, in a lot of cases, these are straightforward because they've, they have a law or they have an amendment, amendment to the law. Um, but in, in some jurisdictions in the world, um, these decisions have been made by uh, decrees or resolutions or circulars or notifications. Uh, and so we had to um, have a fair bit of uh, consultation with legal experts in terms of what we were looking at. Um, the, the laws that are being used historically, um, like I said, there's examples um, where uh, products are restricted because it's been determined internally that the e-cigarette device for example, resembles a cigarette. And so they're using legislation that was intended to restrict things, I, I think, intended to restrict things like candies. Um, and of course, the more current models of e-cigarettes don't look like, um, they're, they're, they're not cigalikes um, necessarily. So uh, it will be interesting, I think, to see how many of those specific decisions are being challenged. Um, we've got... Um, um, derivatives, imitations, or substitutes of tobacco products and therefore being considered tobacco. Um, med medicinal, uh, in some countries it can be determined to be either a medicine or a tobacco and in some countries it's based on the concentration of nicotine as well. Um, uh, we do have a handful of countries that explicitly call them e-cigarettes or ENDS and I know um, neither of those are perfect terms as well. That's been discussed earlier today as well. Um, and I'm just going to, um, I mean, each of these countries has their own set of legislation and their own rationale, and so it's almost false to sort of try and aggregate them out. So I'm, I just wanted to highlight um, a couple of sort of specifics. So Australia is one country that's very interesting. It has relatively low prevalence of um, tobacco use. Uh, and this is another example of using an historic law. Uh, they, they have classified nicotine, if it's not a therapeutic purpose, that it's a poison. And so therefore, any e-cigarettes that would contain nicotine would fall under that, their Poisons Act. Um, and because of that, it's, it's sales and marketing is prohibited. Um, I understand that's being challenged right now. Uh, so there's not a legal point? <laughs> no, okay. 
maybe there's discussions that it should be challenged. <laughs> so, uh, Korea, we talked about Korea because it's one of the only places that has a, a, um, a specific tax. Uh, they're treating the product classifications as tobacco products. And because of that, sort of the other things roll under it, like sales to minors. You have to be 19 to purchase them. Um, restrictions on use in public places and um, transportation. Um, and nic nicotine containing e-cigarettes can only be featured a maximum of 10 times per year, per, per magazine per year, which is a really sort of interesting, I don't, I don't know how, um, <laughs> anyway, it's interesting. <laughs> There's, and then the, their formulation for how they're calculating taxes under a different act, the Tobacco Business Act. Um, and, but of course, if it's an e-cigarette without nicotine, it falls under just general consumer goods. I talked about uh, Singapore and their um, imitation um, uh, sort of construct that's being applied. Um, Togo, uh, not a lot of um, uh, countries in Africa we were identifying with uh, laws. But they're classifying it as a derivative product similar to Singapore. And their law forbids uh, minors, so people under 18, um, from purchase. Uh, it's comprehensive in terms of its advertising and promotion. Um, and they're um, further subject to the proportional tax. I'm not going to go into the UK. Uh, this is obviously a very knowledgeable crowd in, in terms of this. But I, I do want to highlight that the rest of the world does look at what has been happening here um, and all the thought and forethought, and not just in terms of the policy development, but all the systems that have been put in place for um, monitoring and evaluation. Um, so in that sense, uh, it's a lot, of, a lot of people are interested in to see what, what does eventually happen here. And also the idea that these policies have developed here um, within the context of the UK. And so um, with the smoking rates that are here and the systems and the medical systems that, that are in place. Just a, f a few final thoughts before I wrap up. Um, that the, when I, I initially spoke to Amanda about sort of participating here, and it was, uh, it was sort of um, discussed about, you know, well, shouldn't all countries be doing something similar? Shouldn't we all have that be on the same page? And I just, I wanted to refocus that uh, not in all cases, but in some cases, these countries have decided um, the approach that they're taking is what they think to be the best in their situation, given their smoking rates, their his history with the tobacco industry, um, and that there's a lot of other things that, get, that go on, especially with respect to political influences and lobbying. Um, and the state that a country's at in terms of their tobacco epidemic. Um, so I think I'll, I'll wrap it up there. Thank, Thank you very much. Thanks, So, not on the panel, are you? No, I'm not. I, I just want to say, because this is always changing, we've decided to put our scan online. And so you can go on and look up by policy domain or by country. Um, this, and we, we know already Cambodia changed last week, and we haven't updated it. But if there are items that we should be updating, we'd encourage you to email us on the website. Thank you. That's a really helpful resource, actually, that we've used. OK, thank you very much. We'll move on.